Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today, one of the most important topics of category theory, not quite the most important topic will follow later, or the most, whatever the most important topic is, the most important topic is certainly the most important topic in my point of view. But anyway, most people would agree that this is an important topic. So limits or universal diagrams. Remember that kind of universal properties are very important in uh, category theory and limits are universal diagrams. And diagrams are also very important in category theory. So it's kind of uh, by construction, we should believe that these guys are important um, and we'll see what they are. And they kind of are like the limits in category theory, like the uh, limits from calculus, right? So we'll see what that actually means. So the idea is as follows. So we have some diagram, which is down here in my picture. So some diagram, whatever that is. Uh, here's another example of what a diagram is. A diagram is basically just a collection, just a, just a uh, collection of vertices and edges, if you want, an oriented graph. Um, there was a formal description of what a diagram is, right? It was this functor from an indexing category, whatever. Let's forget all that. Let's just think it's a graph. And I would like to draw a limit type thing. So I can draw a lot of other graphs on top of my graph, right? And I kind of the limit should be kind of the minimal type of graph uh, that you can draw on top of a given diagram, kind of the limit of this picture. As you can see, the really, really nice picture that I stole from a really nice blog uh, linked in the description. Like the limit is kind of the minimal type of diagram that you can put on top of a given diagram. So, so it's a limit associated to a diagram, which is a little bit uh, complicated, so I say it again. The limit is associated to a fixed diagram. We will see several examples throughout this video. And kind of the limit should be kind of the universal object arrow type thing, minimally associated to a diagram uh, such as F here. So F was with a diagram for my indexing category in my category. So sending some, some graph to something concrete where everything now is um, whatever, an honest object and, or an honest arrow. And I would like to have kind of a, a minimal type object associated to this Kind of diagram, right? So something that, like in this picture here, maybe this picture is a little bit nicer that you can put on top of an existing diagram in a limit minimal uh, type universal type property uh, type of way, right? So for example, products. The kind of products are very surprising because products are associated to this diagram, which is certainly a diagram. So just a collection of dots. So the classical product with two entries would just be uh, well, the diagram was two entries, but here in this picture, you can think of more general products, uh, products of whatever, how many um, products you would like to uh, uh, summons, we would like to uh, take a product of whatever, A1, A2, A3, A4, as in this picture here above. And the product of those guys is the limit of this picture. It's like the minimal uh, diagram that you can uh, draw on top. And remember the product had this description um, product was kind of this one and it had maps to its components. So if you would like to think of this as X cross Y, then this would be the projections to those two components X and Y. And if you have more of them, of course you have more of them. And the product is the limit of this data in the sense of limit that I will make precise in a second. Um, so the starting data is the red data. It's my little graph here and the uh, product, or in this case, a limit, uh, which is in this case, as a, in this case, this actually is the product, um, is a thing in blue. So the thing in blue, which is the top here, which I now illustrate in red, and the thing in red down here, which I now illustrate in blue, so the thing in, <laughs> in red uh, is the starting, and the thing in blue is the limit. And this will be the same for all the pictures I'm going to show you. Okay, so. Um, it's associated to a starting diagram. The product is a limit of a diagram. It's kind of the minimal type of graph that you can draw on top of uh, this slightly boring diagram, which is just a collection of vertices and nothing more. And yeah, the associated limit will be the product. And yeah, we kind of understand by now that products are kind of important uh, in mathematics. Um, but limits don't just end by products. Just another example would be kind of the pullback uh, the pullback is another example of a limit. It's now associated to this type of diagram, which is the red. Now I'm a little bit more careful. Now I'm giving red, red, and blue, blue. Uh, on the last slide, I was kind of very, very confused, and I gave 
uh, blue red and red blue but anyway uh, so the red part here is the starting diagram as you can see this is just this one here and you fill it up with a minimal type of diagram that you can uh, put on top and it's this uh, blue part so the blue part is actually the limit uh, note hereby and this is crucial the limit is usually always objects plus arrows so in this case it's one object and two arrows uh, in this case it was also one object but kind of multiple arrows depending on the number of vertices you started with but here it's one object and two arrows such that the universal property is satisfied and such that everything you see um, commutes that's kind of the kind of the slogan here right um, so the, the, the pullback is also a limit and now associated to a little bit more complicated diagram three vertices and two arrows in a, in a particular form and kind of the idea uh, if you know whatever pullbacks products uh, equalizers and so on they're all limits i show you some list in the later on at the end of the video um they're all products as you would know that you might want to generalize it just as i said this idea given any diagram so any graph i can associate the limit to it by just putting out the minimal diagram on top so um let's have a look at the definition so this is really how it works. A pair of, uh, well, basically an object and arrows, a collection of objects and arrows associated to a diagram is a limit if the corresponding universal property holds um, that I just write down here. So you have the object L and you have the associated. So this is L, so this is what's the one. So this is, uh, this was too much, I'm sorry. So this one here is, the uh, limit, it's L plus those arrows. This is the starting diagram. It's just in this formulation where you put Fs everywhere, but this is kind of the starting diagram. And the universal property is then whatever you put on top, right? It's just really this picture, whatever you put on top, uh, kind of factored through the smaller one because it's the limit, it's the smallest one you put on, can put on top. So there exists uniquely an associated map between everything you put on top and the limit. And there's, of course, also a notion of a co-limit, which is just everything reversed. So let's see whether we can uh, whether we can make this. So here is my diagram. Um, whether I can make this precise. Here is my limit. And this is the universal property. Whatever it's now, uh, you, can, you can make bigger. Everything that is bigger now, you should now factor through the bigger one. Uh, in the limit, you uh, everything bigger factored through the limit and on the co-limit is it's reversed. And the point is you can now show in general, in absolute generality, uh, the following nice statements. So they might not exist. Okay, so the usual nonsense here, they might not exist. Um, seen several examples of products that don't exist, for example, products in the category of fields doesn't exist. Uh, but if they exist, and that's kind of the whole point, um, then they're unique up to unique isomorphism, which really, really wants to tell you they're important, right? They're unique up to unique isomorphism, which is as unique as it gets, uh, absolutely unique um, as soon as they exist. And this kind of this idea of given on a uh, diagram, you can just build the minimal diagram that connects everything. And that's a limit. It might not exist. It's the same as in calculus. A limit might not need to exist, right? But if it exists, it's an important object. You already know that from calculus. It's kind of the same here. Of course, the limit is just an analogy. There is no really an epsilon delta thing going on here or whatever, but it's really this analogy of kind of the minimal type of diagram sitting on top of a given diagram. Okay, so here's kind of a list of uh, diagrams and limits and even co-limits. Um, kind of fun. I always forget that, but uh, it actually works. So the empty diagram is a diagram. And um, yeah, the empty diagram is a diagram. And the limit associated to the empty diagram the terminal object and the co-limit is the initial object. Um, this one, we had that before here, this funny guy, this the product or dually the co-product. Uh, we had the pullback um, and there's of course also the push out, which is kind of the opposite diagram. And if you have more, so here's just a number of uh, vertices, no edges. If you have edges now, you would get something like the inverse limit. If you have edges in the opposite direction, you get something like the direct limit. And the equalizer is a little bit more fun. It's the one for, it's kind of the minimal type of diagram where you have two arrows and you get either the equalizer or the co-equalizer. And 
Chaos and Whole Zoo of Limits just means draw your favorite, your favorite graph, and there should be a limit associated to it. It probably doesn't have a name uh, unless your favorite graph is the empty graph, then it does have a name. But anyway, so for a random graph, of course, there is no name anymore, but the limit should exist in some sense, at least in most categories. It's most nicer categories it would exist. And the point is a lot of familiar concepts, terminal objects, products, pullbacks, uh, whatever, equalizers, all of them are just special cases of one construction, which is the limit, which is kind of really this nice idea of having a minimal diagram uh, on top of um, a given fixed diagram. Yeah, and I think that's a pretty cool idea. As I said, don't take the notion limit too serious. It's really just an analogy to the limit in uh, from calculus. Uh, it really has kind of the same pro properties. If it exists, it's important, but it might not make sense, right? The limit in calculus doesn't need to make sense. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.